40 years ago today, everyone in this area was talking about what had happened to Coatesville. On Good Friday, back in 1948, the small town of Coatesville, Indiana, literally was wiped off the map. A tornado, which struck with no warning at all, leveled the town, killing 20 people and sending 76 to the hospital. Coatesville will never forget, especially on this 40th anniversary. Mark Voitman takes a look back. Coatesville, Indiana has never fully recovered from the biggest event in its history, the event that nearly put an end to the town itself, the tornado of 1948. It came out of the southwest without even the smallest bit of warning. There was no rain, no strong winds, just an overcast day. Wayne Kivett was in his workshop on North Milton Street. The back door to the store blew open and uh, a bale of hay came in the back door. And I suspect that that was the silliest thing I ever did, to pick the bale of hay up and give it a toss. It went out the back door and it just swooped away and, and sucked the door back shut. And when I turned around and looked the other way, why well, I saw this maple tree, which is standing across the street out on top of the ground. Houses literally exploded with their occupants inside. Buildings collapsed and people were trapped in the wreckage. By someone's reckoning, the tornado lasted a minute and 50 seconds. Then it was over. There was silence and survivors came out. It didn't look like a town, really. <laughs> As I looked back to the north, I could see that it was just rubble and we could hear people crying for help. My husband says, you stay here with the children, I'm going to town. And about that time, I turned around and looked at the edge of town, and my parents' house was flat, nothing out there. Well, I naturally started screaming, and he came back then, and he went out there and found my mother pinned under the um, door facing. And my father was uh, in the outside bathroom, and I remember him saying uh, he looked and looked and looked and said that uh, he looked like a gunny sack laying out there. The town of Coatesville, at least the way people remembered it, had disappeared. The offices of the Coatesville newspaper were destroyed along with everything else, but when the paper finally came out again, it had this to say. The terrific destruction cannot be described. The utter chaos which enveloped the town cannot be imagined. There are no words in the English vocabulary to completely describe the condition. It was just like something out of a movie. You, you know, you did, it didn't seem real. It seemed like that I'd wake up after a bit and all this wouldn't be have happened. Attempts to rescue victims trapped in the rubble began immediately. This car full of people was crushed by a blown over building. We cut the top out of the car, and Mr. and Mrs. Purcell were dead in the front seat, but Russell Siddons was trapped behind the seats, and he lived for some years afterwards, and we were able to get him out of there. At the same time, life went on. When the tornado struck, it was the day before Mary Bryant's wedding. I'd always heard to delay a wedding was bad luck, and we had set our date for the wedding, so we went ahead with it. My sister, she got busy, and and engaged a preacher. We had had a preacher that was coming from out of town to marry us, but he couldn't come then. So she engaged the preacher at her church at Stilesville, and we were married in her house. She got busy and baked a cake, and we had the wedding. Her wedding ring, however, could not be found for the ceremony. I found my hat that I was supposed to wear to the wedding, but that's all of my clothes I found. It was uh, fastened on the fence, flopping along in the wind. and. Uh, Rings we couldn't find, so my mother had uh, got a new set of rings, and she had her old wedding ring, and she gave it to me to be married with. And uh, three months later, when Margaret Hodson and her husband, who'd bought the property, were clearing up to build a house, uh, they found my ring, and she called me and told me. And uh, I put it on, I wore it ever since. It's been 40 years since the tornado struck, and the town of Coatesville still shows signs of it. For one thing, unlike other towns of its size, Coatesville's buildings don't have two stories. It used to be all two-story, but we don't have any two-story building in town now at all. It was all, everything was just wiped off, and uh, they never did rebuild back the second story on here. They didn't rebuild back the second story on, the, uh, on our building there. 
And if you look closely, there are odd things to see, like wood planks embedded in old brick walls. To some extent, it will always be 1948 in Coatesville. Mark Voigtman, Wish TV, News 8.